may wear the same clothes I have the same old name You're looking on the outside If you could see inside it said Why you would see a brand new man Cause the old man is dead
good evening. Welcome to Valley Baptist Church. Let's all stand. Let's sing together. Oh, say, but I'm glad. We'll sing just the first verse. Oh, say, but I'm glad. There is a song in my heart today, something I never had. Jesus has taken my sins away. Oh, say, but I'm glad. Oh, say, but I'm glad. I'm glad. Oh, say, but I'm glad. Jesus has come and my cup's overrun. Oh, say, but I bless. I got to get on the stick here. We got Lord's Supper tonight. And so we cut our song service short just a bit. And uh, we got everybody toward the back tonight. Man, I feel like I got bad breath down here or something. I don't know what's going on. But uh, we're glad you made it tonight. Thank you for your faithfulness. And uh, praise the Lord, we had uh, one lady saved this morning. I don't know if we had anybody saved in our children's churches. Oh, I thought that was from here. Okay. Well, had one saved in the, was that junior church? And then um, how about in primary church? Oh, that was, that was primary? Okay. And does anybody know about junior high church? Do you know, Brother Rich, about uh, primary church? Had one? Okay, that's the one he may be talking about. And then, um, how about uh, junior high church? Brother Gerardo said nobody saved there this morning. Well, praise the Lord, maybe we had uh, at least two saved this morning here on the property, so we're rejoicing in that. And uh, had, a, had a good day on the buses. I don't know the total numbers, but I know we got to pray to get them a little over 100. Okay, 119 that we had. And normally... That's normally we're going to be around 200, I'm guessing, around 200 uh, that we would have. So obviously we've got some work to do and some praying to do uh, to get the riders back in the habit of getting out of bed and getting on the bus. And of course, it's a holiday weekend. I don't know if people travel much. Maybe they do. I know we have some folks in our church that are out of, out of town uh, for this weekend. But you pray for our buses, pray for our bus workers. And of course, it was a busy day. Uh, some of our bus workers yesterday were down in uh, Arizona City with a men's retreat, and so we didn't get the exact visiting time we normally have. So you pray that we can get the bus numbers back up. And the big thing is that we can reach those children with the gospel, and every one of them is very important to God, ought to be important to us, and uh, we want to see them grow and learn. So praise the Lord for that, and got a good start this morning, so we're rejoicing in that, and we're glad you made it tonight. Well, let's have pray. Uh, let's have prayer, and we'll have the guys come and take the spots for the uh, Lord's Supper tonight. Why don't you prepare your heart, even while we pray, as uh, we get ready to observe uh, communion together. Father, we love you tonight. We're so grateful for your many, many blessings. Thank you that you hear and answer prayer, and thank you for your faithfulness, and thank you for your love, and thank you for your mercy, and thank you for your grace, and Thank you for this time, this reminder, this memorial time. We, we tend to forget, and sometimes we forget those things that are the most important or should be the most important to us. Thank you for this time that we can stop, that we can remember, that we can recall, that we can thank you, that we can praise you. And I pray that you would be honored with all that takes place tonight. Bless now during this time and help us to, to take this supper worthily. That, uh, that you wouldn't have to chasten us and that we would be obedient to you. For it is in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Just uh, for information tonight, for folks that may be new in our church, the Lord's Supper that we have here, we, do it, we have it once a month. And it's not a magic number. We don't preach that every church should have it. Some churches have the Lord's Supper every week. Some churches have the Lord's Supper once a year. Some of them have it maybe four times a year, every quarter. We've chosen to have it once a month. We feel like it works best for us here to remember Calvary. I don't, I don't want it to become too commonplace, and not that it would have to if we had it every week, but I, I do think that we need to be, listen now, that we're careful not to just take this time for granted, not to just be careless about it. Well, yawn, here's another time that we take the Lord's Supper together. It should not ever be that way. And so I want us to, on purpose, stop and think about Calvary, think about the Lord Jesus, think about your salvation, think where you'd be if it weren't for your, 
for your Savior. Think about his broken body. Think about his shed blood. Folks in the overflow rooms, I hope you'll do this as well. Take some time to thank him and praise him for what he's done. And God has been very good to us, and he's blessed us in so many ways, and we ought to be thankful. And so we have tonight, once again, we have the combination, little combination uh, with juice and bread. And if you would, when you get those, you can kind of look at it, but let's not fiddle with them the whole time because it'll just be distracting. But uh, we have a piece of unleavened bread that we'll take first and we'll remember Christ's broken body. And I hope you'll do that there in your seat. Would you thank him tonight? Don't let anything distract you from this. And uh, then, of course, after that, we'll have the little juice that'll be in that same package that you receive. And we'll remember Christ shed blood that was given there on the cross. Now, if you're not a member here at our church, you're invited to take part if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior. We have uh, one young man here tonight, uh, Jonathan, back here. Uh, He got saved this past week, and he's going to be baptized tonight. So we're excited about that. And uh, so he'll get to take the Lord's Supper tonight if his parents would want him to do that. But if you have a child or... Maybe you don't know Christ as your Savior. It would be best if you didn't partake of this with us. It would just be kind of a meaningless uh, observation. But I want us to just take some time tonight and think and thank. Think think of what God has done for us. Think of the Lord Jesus Christ and thank Him uh, for His many, many blessings, and especially for His broken body and shed blood. We talked about that this morning. And uh, praise God that he died on the cross, and his payment was payment in full for our sins. And we ought to be forever grateful for that. I want to ask one of our deacons to come. Jim Betts, would you come and lead us in a word of prayer for Christ's broken body as you pray there in your seat, and uh, then we'll distribute the bread. Let's go ahead and pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who was willing to show his love and why we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. His sacrifice, Lord, was beyond imagination. And that when he was nailed to the cross and lifted up, nobody could even hardly recognize him as a human being as he was so beaten and smitten. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you were willing to do that for us. Thank you for your salvation in Jesus' name. Amen.
Would you take that little piece of bread there? If you haven't gotten it out, you can get it out now, and then if you would, let's not to disturb others for a few moments. Would you look at that little piece of bread you have there? Think about this. Think about the fact that Christ, who knew no sin, became sin for us. He bore our sins in his own body on the cross. Every wicked, awful deed, every wicked, awful thought that mankind has ever committed or ever would commit was placed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now think about that. Think about this fact, too, that as Christ bore our sins in his own body, God the Father punished his Son in our place. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, I know it's hard for us to get our mind around. You say, preacher, I thought it was our sins that did that. It was our sins that caused him to have to die. But it was God the Father who had to treat his Son, Jesus Christ, like he would treat us as the guilty sinners. It says in Isaiah 53 that it pleased the Lord to bruise him, speaking of Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ was punished in our place. He paid the penalty for our sin. He took that, that punishment because he loved us. I mentioned that this morning. Nobody took Jesus' life from him. It wasn't that they forcibly took him and forcibly put him on the cross. No, Jesus said, I lay my life down. He gave his life freely. And so it wasn't the nails that held Jesus on that cross. We know he could have called 12 legion of angels, many, many thousands of angels, and debated how many, but many thousands. And they could have released him and set him free. But he didn't do that. He stayed on the cross, and it was love. It was his love for you, friend, that kept him there on the cross. Think about that. As Jim mentioned, his body beaten so badly. He was beyond human recognition. Again, in Isaiah 52, I think, mentions it there. It's just hard to believe. It's hard for us to imagine the abuse that our Savior took on our behalf. Well, we ought, to, we ought to thank him and praise him. I've told this story, but it's been a long time. And I don't know if it's true or not. Just an illustration, maybe it's true. There was a, a man that had saved his small child from a burning building. And in the process of saving this child, his hands and his arms became very burned. And some children, as, as this child grew older, she heard the story, knew what her father had done. Some of the other children would look at his fingers partially burned away and the, just the grotesque skin and everything that was there. Of course, it healed over time after surgeries, but just burned. And they might look at that and say, oh, boy, that's terrible. But this little one would take her daddy's hands, what was left of them, and she would kiss him. She would say, thank you, Daddy. It's a reminder of the love that he showed, being willing to risk his life for the sake of his child. That's, that's a crude illustration, but it, it ought to help us to realize how grateful we should be. We, we ought to go to our Savior tonight even more so than that child would and say, thank you. Others may look at the cross and might mock the cross, might be meaningless, mean nothing to them, but not to us, because it was there that our sins were paid for. And we have life because he took our sins in his body. Let's be thankful tonight. Would you take a minute there in your seat? Would you, old or young, children too, if you're born again, would you take a minute, would you thank him? Thank him for his broken body. I'll give you just a moment there, and then we'll pray together.
Father, we, we haven't forgotten. I believe I speak for most of all of us. We have not forgotten all that Calvary means to us. We haven't forgotten your precious body that was given there. We haven't forgotten the payment and the punishment that you took for our sakes. We haven't forgotten the fact that your father turned his back on you, couldn't have fellowship. A holy God couldn't look on that which was sinful. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying in our place. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son. Make us truly grateful. Help us to, to live for Christ. Help us to, to honor him, their words and our deeds. And may we leave here being better servants. May we search our hearts, even tonight, if there's anything in our life that might hinder our relationship with Christ, something that would be unpleasing. Help us to confess that and determine to forsake that so we can honor and please you. Thank you for your broken body. We love you. We're grateful. For it is in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And of course, if you'll take that same little cup that you have there, and if you'll take that next label off there, let's do that together so we'll not disturb others. We're going to talk about the juice and think about Jesus' blood that was given there on the cross. Let's not be guilty of taking that for granted. His precious blood was shed there. I mentioned this several weeks ago in church on Sunday morning, but 1 Corinthians tells us that Christ was our Passover. And of course, that Passover lamb had to be shed, but it wasn't just an, enough that the lamb be killed, but that blood from that lamb had to be taken and applied. Remember that? It had to be applied to the doorpost and the lentil of the house. So the death angel would come and pass over. And... That blood that Christ shed for us still speaks for us. It's applied to the mercy seat in heaven. It's a pattern tabernacle temple that was here on the earth, like likened to the one that's in the heavenlies, Hebrews tells us. And that blood being applied there is what cries our innocence. We're all guilty. We're all sinful. Because that blood, and that blood can be applied to our hearts in a sense when we accept Christ as Savior. Boy, what a wonderful thing. Think about not only are all our sins forgiven, but no sins will ever be applied to our record. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? I mean, we all fail. We do. And when we sin, it can hinder our fellowship with the Lord, but it doesn't ever condemn us. That sin will not condemn us. We're still forgiven. He'll never forsake us. He forsook, God the Father forsook his own son on the cross so that he would never have to forsake you and I. He says in Hebrews, I'll never, 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 never leave you or forsake you. Negatives on top of each other. Five negatives in that verse. It's all because of Christ's payment, his broken body and his shed blood. And I know it's a Labor Day weekend, it's a holiday, some folks off work tomorrow, but, well, we ought to take this time seriously and really thank him and we ought to praise him for what he did there on the cross for us. Would you pray with us? I want to ask another one of our deacons, Matt, if you'd come with the Matt Robs, and he's going to lead us in prayer thanking Christ for his shed blood there on the cross as you pray there in your seat. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for the love that you have 
for us and for loving us enough to give of your shed blood. Thank you for all the pain that you endured, the blood that was shed in many places, that poured from your back and from your hands, your feet, your side, your head, your entire body. Thank you for enduring that for us. Thank you that we can still know that you did that for us and that we can know that we have a home in heaven someday because of it. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving us that much that you'd be willing to do that, knowing what would happen, and you still chose to do it. Thank you for your shed blood in your name. Amen. Could I give you just a moment there in your seat, and would you just, in your own personal way, would you thank the Lord Jesus for his shed blood? Would you remember all that it means to you in your life? I'll give you just a moment there. Father, we come to you again tonight. We pause our regular order of service, our what we might call a routine, and we do that gladly, and we want to do that obediently in a way that would honor you. We remember, we remember that precious blood, that sinless blood that was given there on Calvary. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being willing to die in our place, being our Passover lamb, so that we might be free, so that we might have hope, so that we might have peace and joy, so that we could know forgiveness of sins and be relieved from guilt and shame. Father, Know our hearts, of course you do. Help us to be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. If there be any wicked way in us, may we confess that. May we make certain there's nothing between us and the Savior. Lord Jesus, words can't express how much we love you and how grateful we are. And we say these things tonight in the name of Christ. Amen. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Now, if you would, please take that little cup and the wrappers, if you have those. It'll be easier on us if we can collect those now. And so, ushers, I think we can just have them drop them right in. We'll not have to pass them. Obviously, children can do that with their parents. We'll collect those. We found our our baskets, so that's a blessing. And uh, let's sing a song while they're doing that. How about, uh, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's try that as the deacons collect this. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. How about this is all my hope and peace? Ready? This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And this is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus.
right, let's sing together now. Where he leads, I follow. Sweet are the promises, kind is the word. Sweet are the promises, kind is the word. Dearer far than any message man ever heard. Pure was the mind of Christ, sinless I seem. He the great example is and pattern for me. Where he needs a follow, follow all the way. Where he needs a follow, follow Jesus every day. Good, we got several announcements. Listen carefully if you would tonight. Don't forget now, our Tuesday night soul winning will do neighbor bags uh, again this week, and we'd love to have you take those, distribute those in your neighborhood. You can give them out here around the church as well. But if you want to take part in that, um, let me know tonight. Text me, call the church, let us know. We'll get those ready for you. It'll be 20 bags, and they'll have tracks in there and a little card that we put in there, and then some goodies. And uh, I just thank God. I, I think uh, we had a fellow visitor come this morning uh, named Sean, and he was reached by somebody passing out neighbor bags. And so we're rejoicing in that. We also had, I know there was at least two saved on last Tuesday that um, we got to meet, and they weren't saved because they received the, the neighbor bags. They were saved because they received Jesus Christ. But uh, they were more receptive, perhaps, because we had a, a little gift to give them and, and something that we had prepared for them. And so please don't forget about that. We'd love to have you take part in that. And you can also show up here at church. We'll make some extras if you show up here at 630, and we'll be going out into some of the neighborhoods. We've covered quite a few of the neighborhoods. We're getting a little further out, just right around the church and trying to be a blessing and a, and a help to them. And of course, get the gospel out. Every Christian, listen... Every Christian ought to be a witness for Christ. You ought to be actively trying to get the gospel to the lost. Everyone, everyone. It's the only way we're ever going to reach the world. We're not going to reach the world because of addition, just everybody paying the pastor. No, it's got to be multiplication. Pastor needs to see somebody saved. That somebody needs to see somebody else saved. Who sees somebody else saved? Who sees? It's got to be that. And so I hope you will be actively doing that. Let's not, uh, let's not get away from that. There's opportunities we have. And I hope you will. Some people are more open now because of all that we've been through. Some people may be more nervous now. But uh, take advantage of every opportunity you have uh, to get the gospel to the lost. Please don't forget about that. And uh, then Wednesday evening service at 7 p.m., we'll be talking about uh, Colossians, the book of Colossians, Complete in Christ. And I think you'll be blessed and encouraged. And so don't forget about that. Then Saturday, bus visitation and teen soul winning at 9 a.m. Tonight, the members of Pastor's Prayer Team will receive their new prayer partner. See Jim Betts, if you would. He's going to be in the choir ready room just for a moment. And uh, get your paperwork from him. Make sure you get lined up with that. And thank you all. Thank you all the men that are praying so faithfully. And, of course, ladies, too. What a blessing that is. Then there'll be a prayer meeting right after the service tonight for about 15 minutes uh, for all teens and adults to pray for revival here in our nation. And boy, we need that, and God can use that, and I hope that He will. And we'd love to have you get involved in that. Our choirs are going to reopen here in just a few weeks. The adult choir practice will begin Sunday, September the 20th at 4.50 p.m., and then children's choirs on Wednesday the 23rd at 6.20 and if you're interested in joining the adult choir, please come to the practice on Sunday the 20th and see Brother Josh if you have any questions about that. Then, of course, we won't have Zoom meetings anymore. I don't think we are. I haven't heard of any of our classes doing that. But we have opened up our Sunday schools, and we'll be meeting at the regular time, 9 o'clock for our children, 9.05 for the adults. And so don't forget about that. That means you got to get up early now on Sunday mornings. Boy, that's a bummer, isn't it? And uh, But I tell you, the good thing is we get to, to hear the Word of God and be assembled together and uh, have some fellowship in our classes, something about an adult Sunday school class, and uh, being able to get to know some people and fellowship and be encouraged. Please be in your place. Don't forget about that. You folks watching from home, we're glad you're watching. Hope you'll make plans to join us on next Sunday at 9 o'clock and then, of course, 10 o'clock for the morning service. 
And then the, the afternoon classes will resume, and we probably need to get some sign-ups going, I think, on that. We, we need to do that, I'm sure, for this next Sunday. But uh, we want to get started again the end of the month. Uh, is that the 27th? Is that right? 27th, is that the last Sunday of the month? And that's for our Pioneer Club and our Boys Battalion and then our Sunflower Girls Club. Please don't forget about that. And we want to get the kids signed up, and we'll have give you more information on that on Sunday. But uh, let's be faithful, boy. Get our children around some godly people and get them around the Word of God. That's, that's key. Our cleaners for this week are on Wednesday, Geisler and Donnelly. On Saturday, Pickard and Perez, don't forget to see jo uh, Brother Josh about your cleaning time. Then all ladies in seventh grade and older, our 19th Annual Ladies Conference is coming up, and it's Friday, September the 25th, Saturday, September the 26th. We have information in the bulletin. I think there's some flyers. Do we have those out there now? I think she made some of those. And so we have those if you need. Does anybody need a flyer tonight? Any ladies didn't get a flyer? Uh, with the information. All right, everybody have that? Anybody need that? All right. Yeah, I guess they've got it, Brother Rich. So if you need one of those, uh, stop on the way out. You can see Brittany Pickard in the foyer after the service and get signed up. The cost is $20 per lady. This, again, is for all of our teenage uh, young ladies and our adult ladies, and so please don't forget about that. Excited about the speakers this year and what God's going to do in that meeting. Then we want to find out who's visiting with us tonight. If you're visiting with us and seated on this side over here, would you do us the honor of standing? We'd like to find out your name and where you're from. We have any guest on this side? Anybody visiting? I don't see anybody. How about guest on this side over here? And uh, we've got Aaron back with us tonight. Good to see Aaron. You know him from work? Man, I'm sorry about that, Aaron. And uh, <laughs> he's got to work with Dave and then come in church and sit with Dave. But we're glad to have Aaron back with us tonight. And anybody else on this side visiting with us? Well, let's give Aaron a hand. We're glad he came tonight. I'd like to take just a minute, and if somebody has a blessing, maybe there was a blessing in your Sunday school class, or maybe in a children's church, or one of our bus workers, would you, would you share a blessing with us tonight? Anybody on this side with a blessing, Trevor? Praise the Lord. First time visitor. He and his dad were outside waiting <laughs> on waiting for the bus to come by. And I tell you, it's it's encouraging. And the devil will do what he can to discourage us. There's probably some writers that we're gonna have to pray and work with and and uh, try to get them to get up on Sundays and get back on the bus. But uh, thank God for the young people that that have a love for the Lord and uh, want to be around church and want to be uh, it, where somebody loves them and cares about them. And uh, who else with a blessing you'd like to share, Brother Carl? Uh, a couple of blessings. Uh, one from yesterday, uh, well, two from yesterday. Uh, we had a great meeting. Great yep. Meeting. Yep. Praise uh, the Lord. Uh, Brother Jeff and Brother Jeff Hughes, they were very good to me. And uh, Brother Oh, wow. really enjoy it. That is a blessing. Praise the Lord for that. And we, I don't know who it was exactly that told you that, but we got a chance to see Olivia's mother and grandmother. Do you remember Olivia that we had prayed for for so long, and she had the cancerous tumor? They're just on her back there, and, and uh, they had to go in and remove so much of that flesh. It takes some muscle. I didn't get to see Olivia. They said that she was having the final skin graft surgery uh, after all the treatments and everything she had been through, and she was walking with a cane because they had to cut so much muscle, I think, when they went in there trying to get that tumor out. 
But uh, her mother and grandmother were so thankful uh, for all the prayers that uh, we had offered. And then, of course, a lot of folks praying for us. They, they followed maybe the story of my granddaughters and just encouraging. It was a blessing to me getting to see some other churches, a lot of other churches. I'm guessing maybe six or seven or eight, maybe. I don't know exactly how many uh, churches were there, but a lot of different ones and men that were there and just great preaching and fellowship and just appreciate Brother Rowe and all the work that went into that. Anybody else with a blessing on this side, something the Lord's done? You'd like to share? How about on this side over here who has a blessing? Yes, sir, Chris? Yeah, now he rode a bus. It was another bus, but uh, it's amazing how that we can find them. The bus workers are out there, of course, knocking on doors, meeting children. A lot of times they'll run across former riders or something. And so praise the Lord that he got to come uh, back to church. That's a blessing. All right, who else with a blessing you'd like to share? No Sunday school teachers have a blessing? Brother Jim? Amen. Yeah. Yeah, had quite a number in the beginner church today. It was it was you had fifteen or so. Penny mentioned it, but I've forgotten. But I know they had twenty, about twenty in the beginner class today, and so praise the Lord for that. And some of them may have ridden the bus, but then of course some came with their parents also. And so we're grateful to work with them and to have a class for them. Sure appreciate Brother Jim and his faithfulness. And, of course, remember Nancy, too. Brother Rich, you had a blessing. Amen. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. I I think you ended up with 37 or something, Carl. Was that right, or was it 32 you had? Okay, I had the workers in there too. And so praise the Lord for a good a one saved. Yeah, i got to hear about that, and I think we did get the slip over there. But uh, praise the Lord for a good start with our primary Sunday school department and then primary church, and sweet to see those kids and let's let's pray for them, and let's do what we can to encourage them. I know they come sometimes, and they might get in your way on the sidewalk or something when you're trying to go out to the car. It's easy to get a little frustrated with them, but uh, I think a better thing to do would be try to pray for them and encourage them. You know, instead of instead of getting irritated with them, if you just maybe encourage them, say, "Boy, I'm glad you came to church today," and uh, ask them their name, and and uh, that'd be a good thing for us to do. Anybody else with a blessing you'd like to share, Joey? Yeah. Yeah. So it was about 9 o'clock, or 8.41 on Friday night. Um, v delivered Joey and, and her first child, Eli, uh, and he's a healthy boy. He looks good, and... and um, V got to come home this morning, and uh, so the baby's at home, so we're grateful for that. And I know I don't want to, again, bore you and everything. A lot of you followed on Facebook, but if you'd pray for uh, Matt and Ashley, I think Matt went to get Ashley this afternoon. I haven't heard an update, but she was supposed to come home. The babies are going to be there, so and we're just praying God will work everything out because on Tuesday... One of the twins will be taken over to Phoenix Children's and have a heart procedure done. And uh, so we're hoping that something's going to work out. I know God's going to work out something. We don't want to have one baby at different hospitals. That'll make it difficult, maybe impossible, for her to go between to be able to be with them. And so we're just praying that God will work it out. Maybe they'll be able to do the procedure and then bring uh, little Alan right back to St. Joe's. 
And there's certain targets they have to hit to be released from the hospital, and it may be a matter of weeks. I don't know. God can do anything. But there's weight targets and then their numbers as far as, you know, just all their vitals and, and everything. But you pray. Pray that, uh, that God will God'll work in their lives. And I'm, I'm excited to be a grandpa, but I'm going to be more excited when I can actually see them. And uh, yeah, I've seen them about like you have um, on pictures and not been able to, to hold them or be with them. But we're grateful for what God has done so far. So thank you for your prayers. Well, we better move along here. Let's sing another song together for our offering. Oh, I'm sorry, Joy, did I leave you out? We've got a couple folks that have discipleship um, completion certificates that we want to give out tonight. And so we're glad and excited for each of these. Level three, Jordan Geisler has completed. Come on up, Jordan. Congratulations, Joe, if you give that to him. Then uh, also level three, Demond Jordan. Demond, congratulations. Good job. And then uh, also level three, Antonio uh, Jack Jordan, sorry, and uh, Antonio Jordan. Antonio, is he here? He's in the other room. All right, we'll have to get that to him. Uh, then also, um, this is level one, two, and three. And Lucy Flory, Lucy's back here. Come on up, Lucy. And then Jeff Flory, her husband. Let me give you both of these, uh, Joey. Level one, two, and three. And I had the privilege of going through that discipleship with the, them. And I love just their their zeal and their desire to know the Word of God. And uh, both of them, I think, true, Jeff, both of you had Catholic backgrounds. Is that right? Roman Catholic. And uh, some of it just kind of in name only. Uh, didn't really have a lot of background in the Bible. But uh, so hungry to, to just learn the Word of God and to see what the Bible says. And as I mentioned this morning, the Holy Spirit has to teach you through His Word if it's going to be something that's lasting to you. And uh, as I, if, if I can talk you into something, anybody else talk you out of it. But if the Holy Spirit will convict you and show you some things from the Word, that's where life-changing things take place. And uh, that's where growth takes place. And that's why we use, use the Bible and got a chance to talk to her. The lady got saved this morning here. What was her first name again? Was it um, Rhonda? Rhonda. Um, and I'm hoping we can maybe get her involved in discipleship and, and uh, talk to her a little bit about it. But I hope you will do that. Anybody you meet, maybe they're new at church, new in the Lord, try to get them involved in a, in a discipleship program. Learn the Word of God. Well, let's, let's sing now. All right, let's all stand. We're going to sing a chorus. Let's sing a chorus. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. The first verse, as the world looks upon me. As the world looks upon me, as I struggle alone, they say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart I'm rejoicing, how I wish they could see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings are me. There's a roof up above me, I have a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Amen. Come ahead, fellas, for the offering. We'll have prayer tonight. And just praise the Lord for a chance to give. God's been very good to us, and uh, we want to be a blessing to others as God has been a blessing uh, to so many of us. Let's pray. Father, bless now the offering. Thank you for a chance to give. Help the money that comes in to be used wisely for your sake and purposes. And may we give from a cheerful heart of gratitude and, and of faith, trusting you and, and of love for you. Bless the gift and the giver, and we'll thank you for it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
preachers are weary, the singers are tired, the church as we know it is losing its fire, and some are discouraged from bearing the load, but we must determine to keep pressing on, cause if just one more soul were to walk down the aisle, it would be worth every struggle, it would be worth every mile. A lifetime of labor is still worth it all if it rescues just one more soul. So preachers keep preaching and singers go sing and laymen keep sharing that Jesus is King. The angels are gathered, they're surrounding the throne, and they'll start rejoicing for just one more soul, cause if just one more soul were to walk down the aisle, it would be worth every struggle, it would be worth every mile, a lifetime of labor is still worth it all if it rescues just one more soul cause if just one more soul were to walk down the aisle it would be worth every struggle it would be worth every mile a lifetime of labor is still worth it all if it rescues just one more soul. A lifetime of labor is still worth it all if it rescues just one more soul. Amen. Oh, that's great. That's a good reminder for us. I mean, Rhonda got saved this morning here and all of heaven stopped and all of heaven rejoiced. And we ought to rejoice in that, and we ought to be thankful. I don't know who was saved in primary church. Rich, do you know the person's boy's name or girl's name? I would mention it if I knew it, but uh, Morgan, the boy or girl? Little girl, and maybe named Morgan, but God knows the name. He's got it written down in the book of life in heaven. And, uh, boy, it's all worth it, all the prayers, all the effort, all the financing, everything that went into that just for one person to be saved. Take your Bible, turn to Psalm 119, Psalm 119 in verse 25. Keep your Bibles out tonight. I'm aware of the hour, and we're a bit later than normal, but I, I've got something, a truth that I think can help us tonight. Psalm 119 in verse 25. Excuse me, 119, verse number 25. We are not absolutely certain who God used to pen this chapter. We believe that it may have been David. There's a couple of reasons for that, and I'm not going to argue about it with you, but one is that the language of this psalm sounds a whole lot like David's other writings. The other thing is, the experiences that are talked about in this book line up with David's life experiences. And so we think it may have been David uh, that wrote this, that penned this. But regardless, the theme of this chapter is very clear. It's the longest chapter in the Bible, 176 verses. The theme is the importance of God's Word. That's the theme of it. And in fact, God's Word is mentioned in nearly every verse. And some verses, it's mentioned twice. Uh, the Word of God is referred to. And tonight we're going to look at one of the psalmist's favorite prayers. And uh, I want to show you in verse 25, My soul cleaveth unto the dust. I'll explain that here in a few minutes. Quicken thou me according to thy word. And the message tonight is quicken thou me. The word quicken thou me means, Lord, make me alive. Let me show you where, where else this, this exact phrase, the word quickened um, as past tense, that's used also here, but I just looked up some of the times where it says, quicken thou me, and that's used nine times. Look at uh, verse 37 of this chapter. Turn away mine eyes from beholding 
vanity and quicken thou me in thy way. Look at verse number 40. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts, quicken me in thy righteousness. Again, a prayer. Look at verse 88, verse 88 of this chapter. Quicken me after thy loving kindness, so shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. Look down at verse 107. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. Look at verse 149. Hear my voice according unto thy loving kindness, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgment. Look at verse 154. Plead my cause and deliver me. Quicken me according to thy word. Look at verse 156. Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgments. Look at verse 159. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. The word for quicken is uh, the word, and again, it's a Hebrew word, so you got to get a lot of that in there, but it's, it's haya, and so it almost sounds like a karate chop, haya, and uh, that's, that's the word that's used over and over in this passage, and then, of course, in past tense, too, if you want to go back through and look at that, you can see other verses where it talks about the word has quickened me, and uh, he's kind of praising God or testifying But everyone that I just read to you, the same word for quicken, that chaya, and it means to give life, it means to sustain life, it means to revive, it means to restore to life, and and it means to restore from sickness, from discouragement, from faintness, from death, it means to refresh, it means to cause to grow. Over and over, the psalmist says, quicken me. Quicken me, make me alive, revive me, restore me, and help me to grow. Give me life, if you would. And uh, again, quicken me, give me spiritual life according to. The word according to is an interesting word too there, and it's used several times with the same phrase. Quicken thou me according to thy word. It's another time it says according to thy loving kindness. The word according to is speaking to me through. And that's what that word means. So you can mark it in your Bible if you want to. But according to uh, is, uh, is the Hebrew word that means by speaking to me through. So he's saying, make me alive by speaking to me through your word or by speaking to me through your loving kindness. He says that one time. And you see, David, whoever it was that penned this, was a man of like passions as us. In other words, if sometimes in this old sin-cursed world we live in, we can, this world can have a deadening effect on us. You ever, you ever get that way? You ever, you ever feel like, man, I'm just spiritually feel a little dead or, or maybe my heart is not passion like it should be for God. And I'm just getting a little, you, we can get discouraged and, and sometimes we face illness and we get discouraged and maybe we get away from church or maybe we get away from the word of God for a while and, and we need to be revived again spiritually. You ever been there before? I've been there before. Have you ever been in a place where you, you, you honestly said, Lord, I need to be revived. I need to be stirred. I, I need to, I need to have some new life breathed into me. Have you ever been there before? I'm not saying you lose your salvation but sometimes you can lose the joy of your salvation. And uh, sometimes it's weariness. Sometimes it's fear. Sometimes we just get off track. And that's what the psalmist said. Lord, if you'll quicken me, he said one of these verses in here, then I can walk according to your way. I can walk in thy way if you'll give me life, if you'll renew me and revive me, that kaya, if you'll give me that, that life. Like the psalmist, we really can all use this prayer, quicken Thou me, quicken thou me, O Lord. And if you feel a coldness in your heart, here's a good prayer, quicken thou me. If you're in a dark place, maybe just feel like spiritually, boy, I'm just maybe in a battle spiritually and I'm in a dark place, quicken thou me. If you're confused, quicken thou me. Kaya, give me life. If you're worn out, sometimes we get weary and well-doing and and we need to be revived again. And, and if you're about to lose hope, here's a prayer for you tonight. Quicken thou me. Keep me alive. Make me more alive, Lord. Revive me. Restore me. Cause me to grow. Now, this psalmist was saved. All right? I'm not talking about a prayer for salvation. That's not, 
It's not what he's referring to in these passages here. And uh, the, the, the truth is, the desire that he had to be made alive through the Word of God just shows that he had some life already, all right? He had some spiritual life. He had some spiritual desire. And uh, so the psalmist is, he had already looked to God in faith, and a spiritually dead man is not going to pray this prayer. They wouldn't have a confidence in the Word of God anyway. And so there was some spiritual life here. But here's the thing. The spiritual life was waning. It was lessening. It was being threatened. And so the psalmist prays, Kaya, he prays, give me life. Give me life, Lord. Revive me. Stir me. Lord, I want my heart to be passionate for you. I, I want to have that love that I had for you. I want to have a love for the Word of God. I want to have a love for others. I, I want to have a desire to please you like I once had. Give me life, Lord. That's the prayer of a saved person. Speak to me through your word. That's what he's saying. Quicken me or give me life through by speaking to me through, again, according to, look it up if you want to, by speaking to me through your word, by speaking to me through your loving kindness, enliven me and give me life. Of course, at the moment that we place our faith in the Lord Jesus and his work on the cross, our spirit was quickened. And if you have any doubt about that, see Ephesians chapter 2. Our spirit was quickened and was made alive through faith in Christ. We have spiritual life, but we battle in this old world. Brother uh, Fisher talked about it yesterday to the men. We wrestle. And you know where the wrestling takes place? In our mind. It takes place here. We wrestle. We wrestle against principalities and powers, and we know what we ought to do, but we fail to do it, and, and we're tempted to do some things. It's a, it's a wrestling match, and, and it's a battle, and we battle the flesh, and we battle the devil, and our spiritual life needs to be renewed. The fire of salvation never goes completely out, but it needs to be fed with fuel, and it needs to be supported by air. And you know how you do that, add that fuel? You pray, quicken me, Lord. Kaya, add life to me. I, I want to be made alive. I want to grow. I want to be revived again. God saves us by His grace, and He keeps us by His grace. But for us to be effective in our serving Him, we need Him to revive us and to stir us and to grow us. And, and I hope that's your heart tonight. I hope you're not satisfied. If you're spiritually waning tonight, I hope you're not satisfied with that. I hope you're not, well, that's just the way it is, and I'm just going to live another day. No, listen, friend. Our prayer ought to be, Kaya, quicken me. Quicken me. Make me alive. And that's a good prayer. Let's, let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. We're so grateful for your blessings. Teach us in the next few minutes. Help us to be spiritually stirred and quickened. Help me to be spiritually stirred and quickened and made alive. And those that are in the side rooms, those that are watching from home, and help that to be our prayer. Lord, revive me and stir me and give me life in this world that we live in. Help us to have that as our heart cry tonight, for it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You ever notice uh, some of the plants even here? And the winter months to us are like the best months, but, uh, you know, for as far as weather, and, and we're hoping that's going to get here one of these days. But uh, there are some uh, plants and grasses that go dormant in the winter. You ever notice that? Like Bermuda grass. We have it. We're trying to get it to come up. We had so much uh, success with our rye grass, we couldn't hardly get that to die out. Now we're trying to get the Bermuda grass to come in about the time we want it to die out again. But the, the Bermuda grass goes dormant. Now, it's not totally dead. There's life there because what happens is with the Bermuda grass, once it starts getting above 80 degrees and, and the heat starts coming, it starts springing to life again. But uh, that's how Christians get sometimes. There are trees that do that. Our elm trees out here in the front, it is good that they grow a lot of leaves and they have the leaves in the summertime because thank God for the shade. Amen. Those are valuable tools. I see our kids sometime at recess and I seen our boys out in uh, PE the other day doing their calisthenics under the tree, you know, circling the tree. Why? Because shade is a valuable commodity and thank God. But here's what's going to happen in just a few months. These elm trees out here in the front, the wintertime will come and they'll lose their leaves. And they go into a state of dormancy. In other words, they're not growing. They're still alive. There's still life there, but it's just sort of deadened. It's going through that, that cold chill, that winter, not too cold here, but there's a, there's a winter too. And of course, it does that back in the, you go back to Chicago. 
and uh, you'll see uh, the big trees, oaks and maples, and, and those trees in the wintertime, they'll lose nearly all their leaves. You've been there before, and of course, you'll see just the bare branches, in the, and it's kind of a harsh-looking scene. And, and, uh, but those trees, are still life there, but there's a dormancy. There's, there's a time where they go through where there's, they, there's not a lot of life, and what happens in the spring, of course, then uh, the life comes, and there's evidence of that, and there's, there's fruit that comes, and, and there's leaves that come. And, and, you know, that's where some Christians get. We get a little dormant. You know, we just get a little, there's a deadness. Maybe it's the cold chill of winter. Our heart gets a little cold. You ever been there before? You ever had to pray, God, warm my heart up. My heart's not right. I, I need to have a warm heart, and I, I, I need to have some life, and I, I want to have some fruit, and I, I want to be able to see somebody saved and help somebody and disciple somebody, and, and that ought to be our prayer. It ought to be that, yeah, Lord, help me, revive me, stir me. God gives life. He maintains life. He restores. And he is the one that revives. Is this a prayer you need? If your heart is cold, if you're not bearing fruit as you ought to, it ought to be, give me life, God. Restore me and, and renew me. Now, you say, preacher, I don't ever need that prayer. I, I, I think you're kidding yourself. How many think that the psalmist who wrote this passage about God's Word, and we talked about last Sunday night, so if you can remember, how many think that 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 psalmist, whoever it was that God used to write it, had a real love, a genuine love for the Word of God? Now, do we have a real love for the Word of God? Okay, is it possible for us who have a real love for God's Word to have a deadening time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nine times. Nine times. He says, quicken me. Quicken thou me. All right, why do we need this quickening? Look again at verse number 25. Go back there, if you would, verse number 25 of uh, Psalm 119. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Notice this. Here's why we need to be quickened. One reason, because of the deadening influence of this sin-cursed world. We're surrounded by dust. That's what we are. Listen, we're, of course, made of the dust of the ground, but we're always associated with dust. The best the world has to offer is only dust. Our old nature is a brother to dust. We must be lifted above that. We live in a sin-cursed world, and we cannot... When when, when the the serpent came and tempted Eve, you remember that story? And God says, you're going to be cursed with a curse, and you're going to slither on your belly. You're going to crawl, and you're going to be eating dust. Do you know the Christian ought to have something higher than that? Again, we ought to be lifted above that. This world can have a deadening influence. We're a new creature in Christ. And and I want to tell you something, friend. This is our milk right here. And this is our meat. It's the Word of God. And, and that's why we need, uh, we've got to set our affection on things above and not on things of this earth. And, and chasing the things of this world will cause our heart to become cold. But here we are. Here we are in the routine. Here we are just getting up in the morning. Here we are going up, rushing off to work and kind of neglect our Bible and neglecting our prayer time and neglecting our, our getting our heart ready for the day. And here we are and we get to work and boy, it's busy and maybe you've got more pressure and maybe there's different jobs that have been assigned to you and, and boy, you got to get to work and you pay the bills and bless God, you make it another month and then you come home and you're worn out and you, and you get in bed and you go to sleep so you can get up the next next day so you can go to work, so you can get what you need to get done, so you can pay the bill. Listen, friend, there are deadening influences in this world, and those aren't even sinful things necessarily, but those are things that are going to maybe take our mind from setting our affection on things above, take our mind from the Lord. Again, you neglect your time with God, you neglect the Bible, and soon your spiritual life begins to wane. Here's a prayer for you. Here it is. Kaya, quicken me. Quicken me, Lord. Revive me. (laughs) Stir me up. Oh, listen, I wish I could get you to do this. And and what it is, it's quicken me according to or by speaking to me through your word. So here's an idea. When you feel your heart getting a little cold and you're getting a little worn out, go to the word of God and pray this prayer. Lord, speak to me. Speak life to me through your word. I guarantee you, listen, if you'll go with that spirit, God will feed you. 
Oh, yes. How many think that God wants you to have life spiritually more than you want to have life spiritually? Of course. Of course. Quicken thou me. Speak to me through your word. Restore me. This world is no friend to the believer. It'd it love to grab us and suck us dry of all of our life and bring us down to the dust. But I tell you what the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 40, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You know what that sounds like? Quickening. <laughs> sounds like God can give life. Amen. You know how you get that? Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Lord, help me. Lord, help me and quicken thou me. Why do we need quickening? Because of the deadening influence of this world, its system, its philosophies, its music. Listen, if you're listening to worldly music, I tell you one thing, it's sapping your spiritual energy. It just is. It's, it's, it's going to leave you dry as dust. It's not going to help you. That's why we ought to say, Kayat, Lord, Quicken me, revive me, help me to have life and fruit spiritually. Why do we need uh, quickening? Because of the influence of our fleshly nature. We're prideful. Look at verse 37. I mean, we could go through all these. I don't know if I'll take time tonight, but turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity. Again, turn me from this way, he says, to the right way. Left to itself, I tell you, our flesh will lead us to a life of remorse and regret. It's just emptiness, chasing pleasure, seeking to fulfill fleshly appetites. Nobody ever, ever did that better than Solomon. If you're, if you're interested in just chasing the things of this world and satisfying your fleshly lust, there are some people that are like that. If you want an example to follow, follow Solomon, because nobody ever did it any more effectively than he did. But how many know it left him spiritually empty? I, I, I believe that Solomon was a saved person. He didn't lose his salvation, but I, how, many, how many really believe with me that he lost his joy? I may believe he lost his spiritual life. Listen, read the book of Ecclesiastes. You know what Solomon said? <laughs> vanity of vanities is all vanity. It's all emptiness. What a waste of my life. You know what would have been a good prayer for Solomon? Quicken thou me, Lord. Kayat, Lord, renew me, restore me. Man, he was around all those wicked women. All the idolatry, idolatry that brought into his heart, to his house. He needed to be stirred. He needed to be revived. Quicken thou me. Speak to me, Lord. Give me the words of life. Couldn't you do that tomorrow morning? Listen, couldn't you do that tomorrow morning? Couldn't you get up a few minutes earlier and say, Lord, I need you to stir me and revive me through your word. Amen. Now, maybe you're off tomorrow, but take time tomorrow morning to get in the book. Listen, God's not going to be able to revive you and speak to you through His Word if you don't open your eyes and put your eyes on the page of His Word. God help us to do that. Don't get off track. Use this prayer. Why do we need to be quickened? Because we're often surrounded by deceivers and enemies of the truth. Look at verse 87 and verse 88. Verse 87 and verse 88. Again, quicken thou me after thy loving kindness, so shall I keep thy testimony, the testimony of thy mouth forever, O Lord. Now, let's see, that's uh, verse 87 is where I want to be. They had almost consumed me upon earth, but I forsook not thy precepts. He said they had me surrounded. I was almost consumed. Quicken me, Lord. That's what he says. Give me life. Man, there's enemies, spiritual enemies all around. And, and sometimes those enemies can be members of your own family. How many of you ever had a maybe a family member or a close friend that may have discouraged you in a spiritual sense? You ever, you ever had that happen? Maybe not everybody, but some have. Oh, listen, maybe they mock or jeer at your Christianity. Maybe they make a joke of your holiness. Maybe some of the teenagers here tonight trying to do right, and you've got some friends or so-called friends, and they jeer at your holiness. It's not easy. Listen, it's not easy when you're surrounded by people that are not living for God. You know what the answer is? Kaya, quicken thou me. Lord, give me life. Give me life. Cry out to God. David knew about this. How many know that David's father-in-law couldn't stand him? He was insanely jealous and tried to kill him, right? Right? You're aware of that. David married Saul's daughter, and Saul's life goal, it seemed for a while, was to kill David. That was it. You know what David had to do? Go to God and say, give me life, Lord. Give me life. 
Man, it's discouraging here. It's hard here. And God sustained him. Pray for spiritual life and energy to overcome temptation and in order that God may be glorified. Maybe at work. You, you ever had somebody question maybe your Christianity at work? You ever had somebody maybe mock you at work or give you a hard time about something you wouldn't say or wouldn't do or wouldn't listen to? And by the way, you shouldn't listen to a lot of dirty jokes. The people at work, they may not agree with you at all, but they're watching your life. And how many know if you do one thing, you can't let your guard down just a little bit because you let your guard down just once. How many know they remember that just once? Right? They'll hold that against you. I tell you, old brother, yeah, he, he said he goes to church, but he listened to that dirty joke. He laughed at that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You say, well, how do I make it? Here's how you make it. Lord, quicken me. Revive me. Restore me. Give me life today as I go to work. Uh, why do we need to be quick? And because we, say, we face seasons of affliction. Look at verse 107. Verse 107, I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy word. In times of affliction, you know what we need to pray? Lord, give me life. Yeah, Lord, it, it, restore me, revive me. Sometimes we face financial struggles. And sometimes there's a time where you go through that and you just struggle. We've been there in our marriage and our life. And Lord, help. <laughs> can be discouraging. Sometimes it's illness, physical pain. It comes, and there are seasons of that sometimes, and sometimes those seasons last a long time, and maybe it's times where you're forsaken by a friend, and it's difficult. You know what you need to pray? Quicken me, Lord. Quicken me. Restore me. <laughs> Give me life. Revive me. Here's a prayer. Quicken me, O oh Lord, according to thy word, give me life. Speak to me through your word. We're saved. Thank God for that. But we need spiritual life after a long season of, of in our country and the, the turmoil that we've had and the unrest that we've had. And some have gotten away from the Lord. Some have. I wish they wouldn't have. Now, not everybody. Some been watching. Some are watching tonight and staying connected that way. But the truth is, some have gotten away from the Lord, and maybe that's you. And maybe your heart's got a little bit cold. Here's a prayer for you. Quicken thou me. Lord, give me spiritual life. I want to please you, and I, I, I want to know you better. Quit looking to others for that. Oh, you say, I'm so depressed. I better talk to Uncle Phil. No, listen. Uncle Phil's not going to be the one that can give you life. Listen, I, Uncle Phil may give you a $20 bill, and maybe that'll encourage you temporarily, but he can't give you spiritual life. Listen, I, I, even your spouse. Listen, you're, I think sometimes we get frustrated because we look to our spouse to do what only God can do for us. And I think as a spouse, we ought to try to encourage and pray for one another, and, and we all love one another, but only God can give spiritual life. If you're feeling a little dead, go to him. Go to him. Quicken thou me. Look at verse 88. Look at verse 88. Uh, go back to that. Quicken me after thy loving kindness, so shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. Listen, we're restored and renewed so that we can be obedient, so we can walk his way, so we can serve him as we ought. You're not going to do that in your own power. Verse 107 tells us that this quickening not only helps us to obey, this quickening helps us to be comforted. I'm overwhelmed. I'm discouraged. What do you need? You need life. You need God giving you life. And how's he going to do that? Through his word. Are you with me tonight? According to thy word. Again, look it up by speaking to me through your word. Again, look at, look at verse number 50. Go back to verse number 50. And we could, we could go through this whole chapter. This is my comfort and my affliction, for thy word hath what? Quicken me. Listen, he said, you know where I found comfort? It was the $100 bill that somebody gave me at church. No, listen, that's not what he said. And I, I'm not against that. And I think you can sometimes encourage somebody else in a way, but it's just temporarily. But the one that can give you spiritual life is the Lord. And it's always through his what? Word. Listen, if you're too busy for the word, it's no wonder you're getting discouraged. It's no wonder your heart's getting a little cold. Quickening, quickening. This is my comfort and my affliction. Your word has, has quickened me. You don't need tranquilizers. You need God to speak life into your life through his word. 
Hey, listen now. You don't have to crack up. Go to the Word of God. Pray this prayer. Quickening is the best defense against the attacks of the enemy, as we read in verse 87 and 88. When you're threatened, pray this prayer. It'll help you to overcome. Quicken thou me. Quicken me, Lord, according to thy word. Look at verse 93. Verse 93. Again, it's a great, great chapter. Verse 93. It says, I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast what? Quicken. What do you know? God's word gave me life. God's word revived me. I was down for the kind, I was down and out, but your word, you, your word made a difference. Again, to keep forgetting God's promises, ask God to revive you through his word. Or if, or I'm sorry, if you've forgotten God's promises, it'll stir your memories. Our church needs to be alive. That's why you need to come to church ready to hear from God through his word. That's, and that's why I need to be faithful to get in the word so I can give you a word from, you don't need to hear my opinions. I sometimes slip them in there, and I give you a few of my opinions. Most of the time I'll tell you this is my opinion. But the tr- that, my opinions are not going to give you spiritual life. You know what? God's Word will, though. Amen. How many of you ever had God speak to you, maybe through a teacher or a preacher, maybe it was online or maybe it was at church service, but God spoke to you through His Word and He used a teacher or a preacher to give you encouragement, to give you life, to give you strength, to, to revive you. How many of you ever had that happen? I think all of us are paying attention. Quicken me. Give me life. Well, that's what our church needs. Be faithful. Be faithful. Be here every service. Spend time in the Word every day. This spiritual quickening comes from a divine source. It comes from God, but it comes from this blessed book. We ought to love it. <laughs> no one, if we understood what this Bible did to us, we'd have the attitude the psalmist had here. Read it. He said, boy, this, this book right here, I can't live without. I love it. Oh, I love it. How we need the Lord and how we need to live in the Bible and how we need to pray early and often. Lord, quicken me. Kaya, speak to me. Lord, give me life. I'm a, I'm a parent, and I'm getting worn out. I'm a grandparent, and I'm getting worn out. Listen, I'm a bus worker. We've only been back a few weeks, and I'm worn out. Now, it's possible. It's possible, and i tell you what we need. You say, what I need is I need to take six more months off. No, friend, because if you take six more months off and you drift away from the Lord, especially that book right there, and your time with the Lord, you're going to be weaker. I mean, no, that's the truth. Amen. You know, we, we go on vacation sometimes. You leave your Bible at home and neglect God and neglect, neglect church, and you come back from your vacation, you know what you need? You need rest. You need another vacation. You're dead. I tell you what will make a difference. It's praying this prayer and getting in this book. Lord, quicken me. Lord, help me. <laughs> Revive me. Restore life to me. Speak to me through your word. And he will. And it'll be like, watch, it'll be like life. God breathing life, spiritual life into you. Well, let's live in this book. Father, we love you. We're so grateful for your goodness to us. Thank you for the word of God. Help us to take and apply a simple message, but really important for us. We need life. Many folks need life. We're a little dead and spiritually, a little dormant spiritually. Help us, Lord, to see The important prayer, one of the psalmist's favorite prayers was this, quicken thou me, quicken me, Lord, give me life. And that would be our prayer tonight. How many say, preacher, I've been saved, been born again? You raise your hands, that's me, I've been saved. Good, you can put your hands down. Would there be anybody here tonight say, preacher, I've not been saved? I don't know for sure. Please don't be embarrassed. We love you. I'm not going to call you out, but I want to pray for you. Anybody like that? Preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved. Pray for me. Pray for me. Looks like we're saved tonight. How about it, friend? Maybe have you gotten a little weary? Have you gotten a little deadened? <laughs> Maybe your heart gets a little cold. We all can get there. How many would say, Preacher, I needed that. I, I just need to ask the Lord to revive me, to stir me. And I see how He's going to do it. He's going to speak to me through His Word. You say, Preacher, God spoke to my heart, and I just need to be maybe a little more consistent in the Bible. I, I, I just need to, to speak to the Lord, have Him speak to me. 
I, I want to look to him for revival. Would you raise your hand and say, that's me, that's me. Father, you've seen the hands. You know the heart's blessed now, please. During this invitation time, do what only you can do, and we'll thank you. It's in Christ's name we pray, amen. Let's stand together as the instruments play. If you ought to come, you come quickly. How about you, friend? Be a good thing. Just get up a little earlier tomorrow morning and say, Lord, quicken me. Lord, revive me, stir me. I want to. I want to. I want you to speak to me through your word. He'll do it, friend. He'll do it. Yes, he will. I'm going to let you go ahead and be seated. I, I appreciate your patience. I have gone over tonight, and thank you for being so patient with us. We do have one that's come tonight. I had a chance to talk to Jonathan earlier, and as I mentioned, Jonathan got saved this week. I think it was at home, wasn't it, John, that you got saved and, and uh, asked the Lord to forgive his sins and come into his heart? And Do you love the Lord Jesus, John? Do you love him? Yeah, and you want to live for him? That's a good thing, bud, and we're happy for you. And so they had asked me if I'd baptize John, so I want to head back and, and uh, give us just a couple of minutes, and we want to rejoice with Jonathan tonight. This is a big step. Jonathan Robs, and he's five years old. That's about the same age I was. Jonathan, when I got saved, and I was a little scared to get baptized, you're braver than I was, I think, and uh, he's going to follow the Lord in baptism. So, Brother Matt, if you want to take him on back, and I want to head back there and we're going to have somebody come up and lead us in a song. Trevor, if you want to come. Also, the New Beginnings Sunday School class, um, Brother Oscar and his wife, Raquel, are working with that. Now, so far, they've only been able to pick up the ladies at the, uh, the transitional homes. I mentioned that, I think, this morning. And we're hoping to be able to get the men, and we got to get approval and things. But they're asking if anybody would be willing to make breakfast for them and uh, I'm okay with you doing this um, for about, probably about eight folks, maybe, something like that, about eight people, and maybe on a rotation. In other words, maybe somebody could do it once a month, once a month. Do we have anybody that might be willing to do that and help you would, Debbie? Anybody else would be willing to do that, Jackie and Gio? Gio? We've got four, and I guess if we have more than you need for a month and maybe just every five weeks or something like that, um, if you're able to do that, could you see um, either Oscar or Raquel tonight, just maybe touch base with them and figure out if, what, how the best to work that out? I appreciate that and appreciate their work. All right, let's sing a verse or two of a song. All right, we'll get the words up on the screen to page 5050. Uh, there's power in the blood. I guess you guys don't need the number, but I have it. Here we go. Sing it with me. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. I guess we'll sing until we hear a voice from behind the screen. So let's sing that next verse. Here we go. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's time. There's wonderful power in the blood. Sing it out now. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. 
There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Let's sing one more. We're ready? All right. Jonathan Robs tonight. Jonathan, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? And Jonathan's not ashamed of Christ, and we rejoice with him in this decision. So, Jonathan, upon your public profession of faith in Christ, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Buried in the lights of his death. Raised in the lights of his death. <laughs> And the servant said, Master, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. <laughs> all right, let's all stand. Let's sing our chorus of the month. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There they are. Let me get my words. Let's sing it together. Ready? As the world looks upon me as I struggle along, they say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart I'm rejoicing, how I wish they could be. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me, I'm a good place to sleep. There's food on my table, and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. God bless you. Thanks for coming this, after this evening. Have a great week. We'll see you this Wednesday.